So today I want to work a little bit more with mine colonies. As you guys said in the comments, you guys are really enjoying this and I'm really enjoying it as well. Um, and we're going to take a look at the citizen's hut. That is going to be the next thing we have to make and get working. Um, so yeah, there's not too much left to kind of work on here. Um, the citizen hut is not too difficult to make. Uh, looks very easy, right? Citizen's hut. Where's it at? We have to find it right around. You know what? There it is. Okay, perfect. So citizen's hut, and we're going to do the same thing with this. We place it down and basically figure out where we want it to, to go. Um, that's going to be our next step. Before we get started with today's video, I do want to give a huge thank you and shout out to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. At the moment, many of us are at home and many of us are online. And while we're online, we need to stay safe. So that's where Surfshark comes in handy. Surfshark is a fantastic VPN that you can use to encrypt your personal information and that's something you kind of want to keep secure nowadays. So what is a VPN and why would you need one? Well, it helps you hide your IP, which is something that uh, is very, very public when playing on Minecraft servers. For example, if you were to log on to, let's say any old random Minecraft server, that admin, whether that admin may want to see it or not, is going to see your IP, but not if you use a VPN. So if you want to stay safe while browsing the web, then I recommend using my promo code, which is chosen, which will get you 84% off and one extra month for free. And again, I want to say thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. So where do we want to place this hut? Hmm. I mean, I guess anywhere. Let's go ahead and use our building one and let's just see what it actually looks like. So this is the citizen's hut and very, it's actually kind of small and we're probably want to go with wooden like everything else. Wow. That one's actually quite large. You know what? I might go with stone on this one. We have so much cobblestone. I think stone might actually fit in with this a little bit better. Yeah, it definitely looks all right. It's missing doors, which I understand. Doors and windows will go in later. Um, and we need this to be turned a little bit more sideways because right now it is definitely in the way of everything else. So let's see, will this work? This might actually fit just perfect. I think I want to line it up just a little bit more this way. There we go. Line the corners up. Things are looking good. Make sure the back and everything is fine here. I think it is. Yeah, everything looks, looks good and we can go ahead and hit accept. And now we have another spot over here for which our citizens hut is going to be built. Now, actually, um, am I able to cancel this? I don't, I don't remember. No, probably not. I, Cause I don't remember if I needed to place this. I don't think I, it needs to go any higher. It seems to be just about where it needs to go. Cause this right here is here. Huh? I hope it doesn't dig down. If it does, we'll make it look good. So now that the citizen's hut is being built, let's go and see what we got. Oh, we got some steel ingots. That was actually a good reward to be honest. Um, so speaking of steel, we kind of need to focus on some other tech stuff. Um, just to kind of get us out of here while this guy is currently building up. It looks like I probably should have placed it one down. Wasn't expecting him to build up. Uh, but anyways, this guy is currently building up. We'll, we'll just have to make it look nice. Um, we should probably start working on our tech. So getting ourselves some power, we can probably use actually additions. I think it's going to be a really cool early game um, way potentially of generating some power and not just using coal. So uh, actually additions has a lot of cool methods of doing that. We have the fermenting barrel um, and we can get some pretty early things set up um, to do this. Now we do need to, however, farm um, some of this canola, right? So we have some canola right here and we need to get a farm up going for this pretty fast. Right now I have a lot of wheat and stuff, but we really need to get canola planted. Let's see, I can turn these into canola seeds and we can start to produce a little bit of canola here. And I think we should be able to get a pretty sustainable canola farm. No problem today. So getting your canola farm set up is not that hard. If you go ahead and make a simple watering can like I have, um, getting these to grow up to full doesn't take too long. I'm just gonna make sure you keep your watering can full and convert your canola seeds that you get from this. Just go ahead and convert them over 
into actual seeds. And before long, this will be, yeah, you'll have an entire crop filled with canola. It's crazy. And also, I went ahead and got myself some more worms. You might see some farmland just randomly generated. If you just till ground, um, it'll go back to dirt and stuff. So as long as you till the ground and yeah, you just let it go back to normal, it'll eventually turn right back to grass and there's free worms and worms actually help your crop grow. So I do recommend those a lot. So now that we have our canola farm pretty much ready to go, we need to get the power set up for it. And I pretty much made all the machines, so we are ready to go there. I do need a farmer that is set up that is gonna be automatically farming the items here. Um, and then I'm gonna use some item, um, just pipes. I think I'm gonna use regular the regular item um, nodes, transfer nodes that I have. Um, but for everything else, I think for fluids and stuff, we're gonna use the Actually Editions lasers. So to get this to work, um, I need to make sure this is getting power. Um, so I'm gonna have an oil generator that is going to be powering it. I might actually be able to set this all on top of one another like this. And then I need a canola press and this right here, a fermenting barrel. So the canola press uh, really needs to be connected to this in some way. We need to be sending items to it. So I'm gonna give myself some room to send items to it. Um, and then we need to send the fluids from this to here. And then I need to send the fluids that this makes uh, to the oil generator. All of which should be able to be done with lasers as they are pretty nice. I'm gonna demonstrate that here in a little bit. Um, so this should be able to power this thing. I, I'm pretty sure this also needs a little bit of power. Um, man, you know what? This actually might work a little bit better if I just have these two things placed right here and just give it a little bit of space. So that way this gets power, this gets power, everything's getting power here and we're able to uh, to get these things working. This, however, does not need power. Okay, so now that this is working, it's gonna be like a laser, crazy laser fest going on here, but we should be able to get this done. So I'm gonna need, what, two, two or three fluid lasers? I think three, three fluid lasers. You can always convert these back um, and they work really well and really fast. I think the transfer limit on them is infinite almost um, or whatever the max number would be like two point something billion or whatever. Um, it's a pretty high number. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook these up. Um, so let's worry about the fluids. The items um, I'll worry about later because we just need to get items over here. Everything else should be able to be hooked up with lasers. So it'll go into here first um, and this is going to be directly transferring fluids out and we can actually make this go through blocks, right? And uh, so yeah, I'm actually gonna need all four of these to be fluid lasers, now that I see it. All of them to be fluid lasers. Because we're also gonna need a fluid laser that is going to pull out of the top here. And then go into this block, just like that. So yeah, it may seem kind of weird, but what we're gonna do is click here, and then click there. That should connect those lasers, and then I'll connect this laser to this laser. And everything should work. You see, if fluid will flow in both directions. Um, we can actually change that. So I need a compass. Just a regular old compass to get this to work. And I don't think there's any mod that changes the compass. So let's go through here. And uh, what I can do, this is set to both directions, only into adjacent blocks, um, only out to adjacent blocks, both directions. So only into adjacent blocks, only out of adjacent blocks in both directions. And you can see that is something that you can change. Um, this is set only into adjacent blocks. I believe it's only gonna go into here. And this is only out of adjacent blocks. Same goes here. This should be set to only in to adjacent blocks. And this one will be set to only out of adjacent blocks. So this little setup, is almost ready to go. This this thing is pretty much self-sufficient, um, minus the fact that we need to get an item node on here. So, item node, and we also need a filter. So let's go ahead and get a filter for this. Now the filter for these are just sticks. I'm actually gonna make two, and we also need pipes. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a chest, or actually a crate. 
would probably work a little bit better. One that's from Actually Editions. Why not? There we go. And uh, what this is going to do is we're going to specify what goes where. Um, and I need a crate because we're going to tell it where we want this to go. I'm going to go ahead and place the crate there for right now just to make it a little bit easier on myself. Hop down, place this. Now here's where I'm going to make our filters. Um, because of how, how this needs to run, I need to take a little bit of this. And I'm going to specify what I want to go where. Because as of right now, this does canola, as you can see. Um, so, I, oh, I need to take this off of here, actually. Let's take that off. It actually needs to go here. On the side. And the filter, we can open that up and we can say, all right, only pull out canola. So only pull out canola. That should be set to whitelist by default. And then I can put that in there. You can see right here, canola. Now, if canola is in here, it should automatically pull it out. There we go. It fits in this slot. Perfect. Um, and I don't think the slots 100% matter. I think one side is seed slots and the other side is where canola would be stored. Um, and here's something where we need to change that connection. I don't think it 100% matters. I don't think it's going to go there, but a hammer will fix this. Um, it is a hammer from... Actually, yeah, right here. It's a regular crescent hammer from Thermal will uh, be able to change those links. So there we go. I can remove that. Now, same goes for this. This filter, we're just going to place canola seeds. Just be very specific. And there we go. So seeds go in. Don't know if it matters if it goes on. I don't know if it goes on this side or not. We're going to find that out. Go ahead and get uh, this placed here. And uh, now to get this thing whole thing started, well, we have to give it a little bit of power. I'm just going to use this right now to jumpstart it. Because well, we have to give this press a little bit of power to get it going. So there we go. So that will, will jumpstart this, which will then go into this barrel. And once this is done fermenting, it should go into here. And you can see right there, that should be enough to jumpstart the whole process. Given that you have enough canola here for the farm to work, right? Now, here's where I want to see, will this pull the seeds out? Because I'm not, not seeing it. Maybe it is pulling seeds out. I only see, yeah, it's definitely not pulling the seeds out. I'm wondering if it needs to be pulled out from underneath or something. But this is definitely coming out. Right here. But for some reason, seeds are not. Because everything else is working. That's working. And there we go. So we're producing 80, basically 80 RF per tick off of this little generator. Not too bad. And it's definitely self-sufficient. And uh, later on, we can totally start generating more power other ways. Now that we have a little bit of power being generated, we need a place to store that power as well. Um, I might as well just keep it stored here and we can go ahead and just throw some stuff over here. So what I need to do is just place a regular energy laser. And the good thing about these is they go through walls. So you don't have to really worry too much about them. I can even place it right there. It's not going to matter. I can just hook my wrench. I right click on this. Walk in, if I can walk in, man, the climbing goes really make it hard. And just click right here and bam, we have ourselves a connection. And uh, yeah, we can just fill it back in as if nothing had ever happened. Very cool. Same goes for the uh, coal generator. If I wanted to make sure that this always had a consistent stream of power, I could do so. But as of right now, it does seem like this is functioning uh, way better than I would have hoped. Yeah, I think it's working great. Um, and yeah, we can actually start sending this power elsewhere. One place I probably could store it is right here in this battery. So that is probably where I'm going to uh, going to store this. So let's go ahead and sleep. I need to grab a bit of clay. I don't think I have any more clay. I am I'm like on, I'm just right out of it. And this is looking pretty good. I think this is the storage house. I, I still think the guy needs a little bit more help. It's a little bit of something. They're all talking. Um, okay, so... Should have a house? Okay. 
Would like to have a house to go to every night. Um, I'll work on it. I need 42 cobblestone stairs to continue working. Oh, I need to get the uh, the guy all of his uh, materials. So yeah, he's still working on all the, the rest of the build. Let's take a look for clay. I think there's some like literally right down here. Man, that looks a lot like clay, but it's not. Anyways, I'm going to find some clay and then we're going to get ourselves some nice... Oh, there's some power storage. So the good thing about setting up things like this battery here is that we can actually set priorities. Um, so I can say that this is going to go here and give this node power and this is going to fill this up and prioritize this. And then we can send it over here to this one and we can prioritize this next. So just by clicking here and here, I'm now sharing power with this area. Now I do need to set the down as a place that power can start being received. And yeah, this is a little buggy. The menu has always been a little bit buggy, but that should start filling up with power. Does it need to be off. I think it needs to be on. Let's check our power system. I hope it didn't just drain everything, which it probably is. Yeah, it's just draining all the power. See, I need to be careful with this because I still want this to be able to power everything else. Right? And I don't think it's going to prioritize it first. We'll just have to see. But it's still working. So everything is still working. I don't think those things require much power at all to run. So our little house here, it, it's, it's all right. But uh, it's nothing to definitely brag about. So I'm going to go ahead and chop away at some of this and make it look like it fits a little bit more in this area. Because I think once it's done building, it's definitely done... Nothing too fancy to to worry about. Um, but if we tear down some of this, we give it a little bit of a like a little bit of a work over here. Um, we should be able to make this look a lot better, like a whole lot better. Like this, adding this little porch area, definitely looks a lot better. Um, and maybe, man, maybe some slabs. There needs to be something here that I can do, like even that helps a lot. Um, I can go grab some leaves with our shears. I'm trying to think of what type of leaves. I, I probably should just go with regular oak. A lot of these are going to need just regular oak leaves. I mean, to be honest, the, the whole builds basically oak. Need a little bit to spruce it up a little bit. Not, that that was a bad pun. That That was not intentional. So you can always add bushes. Bushes definitely make things look a little bit nicer. Always, in my opinion, make things look a whole lot nicer. It doesn't even have to make things look all grown up either. It, it can just be there to add a little bit of uh, decoration. Almost as if, um, I don't know, you have a bunch of bushes, I guess, in your yard. <laughs> oh man, it's like some nice little landscaping touches. Speaking of bushes, we just got a new house recently. Man, we have some bushes in the front yard, but uh, nothing like their neighbors, man. I would love to get some really nice bushes, but man, they are not cheap. In real life, bushes are not cheap at all. Keep that in mind. Real life bushes, expensive. All right, so we're almost done. There we go. Yeah, just adding a little bit of flair to this and it, automa it already looks a lot better. Now, this definitely needs some windows. I don't know why it doesn't come with windows. It seems kind of odd, doesn't it? And the way the top half is, I guess leaves a little bit of a gap for air. I have no idea what they were thinking there, but it works. It gets the job done. I mean, I kind of under understand that no mobs can get in. I mean, it doesn't seem, it doesn't look that bad. And what we can do is on top of the windows because of how they are, we could probably do this. And that'll also add a little bit. Almost like it's a, uh, a little shade above there. Yeah, instead of having like the sideways windows, like uh, shutters, you can do it like that. I kind of like that. Thing with that. Looky there. Already 100% better, I think, than what it was. I mean, it is what it is because of just it being built out of cobblestone, solely cobblestone, which is actually kind of crazy now that I think about it. 
the more I think about the material that it's been built out of, the more I'm like, wow, that's all they built it out of. But I'm going to go ahead and add some finishing touches. I think this definitely adds a lot as well. And voila, they have a house to call home. Very nice. So when looking at this, I just realized this is actually only his house. Um, and I, I thought that you could have more than, I think you can have more than one citizen in here. Um, am I able to move the citizens with the town hall? Um, that's something, cause I am pretty sure you're able to have like a male and female in the same, uh, building. So I'll work on it. Requests, nothing. House modify. Okay. So no modifier. A builder option, citizen recruitment. That's not something we need to know. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can recall citizens. That puts them all here. Oh, wow. I didn't know we had like multiple females. Well, I guess that makes sense. Two guys, two, two ladies. Um, yeah, this literally seems to be about it, right? Oh, permissions. Citizens. Settings, work orders. Okay. So everyone seems to be upset, <laughs> which I don't blame. I don't blame at all. Um, it's just because I need to figure out how to get them into a house. And this is only one house, one of the houses only at the moment. Uh, name your building. Okay. I'm not worried about that. Not worried about that either. Hmm. Remove citizen. I have no options. Build options. I guess that would be to change it. I'll have to figure it out. So I looked it up and according to the building level, uh, it, the building level basically depends on how many people can, you can have in here. So a building level of two can house two people as of right now I can only house one, uh, which is fine. I'm housing one citizen, which is our main worker. Oh man, them talking is so weird. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> Man, today has been a pretty different episode, a pretty awesome episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, um, and I really do appreciate um, you guys allowing me to do things like have sponsored ads and things like that, because um, really it is a it is almost a necessity at this point. It is getting kind of crazy. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to give that video a huge thumbs up. And also, if you haven't subscribed already, I highly recommend clicking that subscribe button. I also do live stream on Twitch. You can find that linked all down in the description below, along with that, that coupon code for Surfshock. I do appreciate it, guys. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.